Jesse Foster welcomes you to Father Nation, where other dads illuminate your path to become a better father. Prepare to enter into the man cave. And welcome to Father Nation. This is host Jesse Foster. And Father Nation is a place where I interview dads about their experiences as, as a dad so that you can gain wisdom in your journey as a dad. Father Nation today is brought to you in part by Al Cole from CBS Radio and his sh- show, People of Distinction. On Al Cole's People of Distinction broadcasting network, talk shows, among, among them with actress Dee Wallace, who happened to play the part of a mother in the movie E.T. with Steven Spielberg and actress Drew Barrymore. I'm happy to have Father Nation airing over the Live 365 network in addition to the iTunes radio network. Today on the show, we have a treat. We have Dennis Miranda. His website, running to win pghcom That means running to win Pittsburgh. Dennis is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And he has a book coming out, The Strength of of a dad. He's a former Marine, and he has a motto, run to win. Dennis has two boys, aged 25 and 23, and a young daughter, 11 months, who he's recently adopted. Dennis, it's great to have you on the show. And let's just start out by giving us a little more details about who you are and your family. Okay, great. Hey, thanks for having me, Jesse. Uh, Well, um, I'm a a believer in uh, Jesus Christ, uh, but I'm also married to my beautiful wife, Tina, for over 25 years now. We were actually high school sweethearts, and uh, we have also uh, three just amazing kids, uh, as you mentioned before, uh, Dennis, Darren, and Sophia. Sophia, whom uh, we've adopted just recently and became finalized back in December, um, and we have adopted her out here in the Pennsylvania area. Uh, I'm also a retired Marine, did 20 years in the United States Marine Corps and retired as a gunnery sergeant, or gunny as they call it. And I'm also what I consider a proficient scribbler or a, or a blogger. Um, so I enjoy writing, and as you mentioned before, I hope to have uh, that book published uh, before the end of this year. Now, your website is running to win pgh.com. Again, running to win pgh.com. Tell us a little more what's on that website. Sure, yeah, I'd be glad to. Um, the inspiration from that site uh, came from a particular Bible verse in the, um, in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 9, verse 24 where the Apostle Paul was telling believers of the early church to run to win the race, um, of, of uh, the spiritual race. Um, Paul used things that were going around in that community, and it just so happens that in that area, uh, there was folks, you know, who, or communities, rather, that uh, ran marathons and, and races. So he used that analogy to help inspire folks. Um, where that ties into me is... Um, I was a recovering, I am a recovered alcoholic who actually used running as a way to uh, maintain and keep my sobriety. So I've ran countless marathons and ultra marathons. And just for our audience, uh, ultra marathons is when someone who's crazy enough to run a marathon gets the crazier idea to run even further, sometimes uh, anywhere greater than 30 miles, 50 miles or 100 miles. So um, when I read that verse uh, from 1 Corinthians, that really resonated with me as a runner. And it's something that I held on to and has helped me uh, greatly in my sobriety and in life in general. So as a former Marine, I'm I'm assuming as a Marine, you you had to have a lot of discipline. And as as an endurance runner, that takes a lot of training. Uh, how, How did being an endurance runner and a Marine help you as a dad? That's a good question. Um, It helped me to, when things got tough, no matter how tough they got and no matter how, you know, what I felt internally, 
um, it always encouraged me and strengthened me to just keep going, to to never give up, um, to to accomplish the mission always. And uh, but also uh, in in the Marines we have uh, two um, I guess commandments if you want to call them for every uh, leader uh, throughout leadership. And it's to accomplish the mission first, and then troop welfare also. So I was able to use apply those in my family, but also just in in many areas of my life. This is Father Nation with host Jesse Foster. You're listening today with Dennis Miranda. He's with Running to Win dash pgh dot com. I think that pgh stands for Pittsburgh, correct? That's correct, Jesse. All right. Well, Dennis, let's get into your experiences as a dad now. Uh, What is one daddy dud that you have made, but also something that you've learned? Uh, By the way, I I like that expression, uh, daddy dud. Um, I think I've had a lot of duds in in my life, but uh, one that really comes to mind, one of my greatest failures as a dad in the past was in the area of respect. Now, um, respect can be one of the most important things to a man, but to me uh, personally, it became the most important, uh, which kind of uh, you know made things a little crazy. So because I struggled with a lot of insecurity, one being uh, feeling inadequate for the role of a dad, uh, I would often demand respect from my family vice earning it. Um, so because I never knew what it meant to be a good dad, I often took my cues from my boot camp drill instructors in the Marines and other Marines in the workplace whom I admired and thought, well, that was the way I was supposed to treat my wife and children. Uh, but I was wrong. Uh, as a result, I became very domineering, almost to the point of, you know, being tyrannical in some respects, you know, and uh, at times verbally ab- abusive towards my family. Uh, especially, as I meant, alluded to before, especially during the height of my alcoholism. But what I've learned, though, Jesse, was that my wife uh, is my partner and not my opponent. She's my best friend and not my enemy. And she's my greatest ally in our marriage, as well as what I like to call the fatherhood fight. That's kind of an affectionate term I use for fatherhood. And she's definitely not my adversary. But what I also learned about my kids is that they were gifts to be treasured. Uh, They're human beings who are going to go out someday and start families of their own. Uh, And what they weren't was my Marines, and neither was I their drill instructor either. And you've got a kind of a unique situation. You've got two grown boys that are in their early 20s now, and you've got an 11-month-old daughter that you've adopted. so not many dads can say they've been in your situation uh, with those ages so so far apart and so so different. What do you think today is your biggest struggle as a dad, given your your circumstances? Well, just I tell you, uh, I struggle with socks. Um, every morning as I try to get my 11 month old daughter Sophia dressed, I quickly find myself in sort of a UFC Ultimate Fighting match with socks. Um, I put the left one on, and before I can get to the right foot, she's already got me in a leg lock while twirling her left sock in my face, kind of sort of mocking me, you know. Uh, she laughs, she giggles while, you know, I do what I do and I tap out. But um, all joking aside, uh, what I struggle with is just trying to keep up with Sophia. And as you mentioned before, uh, at 43, um, 43 is a long way off from being 20 when I first had my two boys. Um, before, before in, in the past, um, I could still function on just a few hours of sleep uh, through the night. Uh, but now I'm lucky if I get a solid hour of steady sleep uh, right now because Sophia is constantly, um, you know, demanding a lot of our attention throughout the night. You know, because she's an infant, and I'm real lucky that I make it alive to and from work each day. I got about an hour commute uh, one way, so. I say my struggles is just, you know, uh, dealing with my age. <laughs> yeah, a lot of dads struggle with that, I think, no matter what their age. If you have a crying infant at night, it gets tiring. Absolutely. And Dennis, one of your themes, obviously, is running to win. You're a, you're a former endurance runner, even an ultra marathoner. 
and the verse you used in Corinthians about running to win the race. And I also want to bring up the topic, another theme that you've you've mentioned before, the four P's of parenting. You had uh, pray, provide, mm-hmm. protect, and presence. Uh, can you talk about yes. real quickly each of those and what that means to you as a dad? Absolutely. Uh, to me as a dad, uh, I think praying is just so important, whether you pray for your children or you pray over them. Um, for instance, uh, every morning when I... Uh, bring Sophia to daycare as we're walking up the steps before I drop her off. I just uh, pray to God a blessing over her for that day and, you know, just for a joyful heart. And uh, I also pray for her daycare providers as well uh, because, um, you know, we we entrust them, our children, into their care. But prayer is, is important to me also because it's my primary communication with our Heavenly Father, you know, where I can just come into His presence and rest. Um provide i think you know every dad's most basic role is to provide for their family you know provide for their children Uh, we kind of take that for granted sometimes and think that well everybody does that but the reality is is that not many uh dads will do that Uh, but my dad although he wasn't perfect and you know really who is uh, my dad showed me early on you know that he was a strong provider for our family um protection I think now more than ever having a daughter really just scared me into reality that, you know, uh, where, where I have to, uh, you know, just be on guard and just protect her as, as a daughter, as a dad, you know, uh, because she's going to know through me how uh, other men should treat her. And I believe one of the areas of that, of being, you know, a, a, a man in her life is to is to protect her, you know, guard her against all harm and all evil. Um, the last one is presence. And I think that's so very important, too, as a dad, because no matter what age your kids are, we need to make an effort to always be present in their lives, you know, and in their hearts, too. Um, my oldest son is away at college and even though he's a little over an hour away I don't get to see him as often as I used to when he was living here but we make an effort to go up there and every time we do we probably spent maybe about two hours at the most with him me and my family but I always try to leave him with something where I I either plant a seed in his heart so that way it can carry him over to the next time we meet so it's always important to be present in the, the lives of your children this is Father Nation with Jesse Foster. You're listening in to Dennis Miranda today as he talks about fatherhood. And Dennis, let's turn the corner here and talk about advice. You just gave some good advice there with fathers with the four Ps, pray, provide, protect, and presence. Let's talk about maybe some advice that you have been given as a dad. Maybe it was a relative. Maybe it was a friend. Maybe it was something from a book. But what is one piece of advice that you have received as a dad that helped you? Uh, One piece of advice that has helped me, um, you know, they say the the best advice is sometimes your own advice. So drawing from um, one of the P's uh, in parenting that I uh, go by is, once again, I believe that presence is very important. Um, And as I mentioned before, it doesn't matter what age your children are. We always need to be present um, in the lives of our kids. But also, um, I think it's important, too, to invest in your kids early in their childhood. And by doing so, it's going to pay huge dividends when they're older, much less yield a great return on your investment. And if you're married, uh, I I always ensure that I try to invest first in my relationship with my wife because I, I really believe that there's no greater ally to a dad in the fatherhood fight than a mom who feels loved and cared for. Yeah, absolutely. If if you can love your wife, that's going to be great for your kids in the end. Uh, Dennis, what about one habit that continually makes you a better father? Obviously, uh, loving your wife would be a great habit. Being present is a great habit. Uh, but what is it? What's another habit that you have used as a dad that has helped you? Uh, for me, it has to be prayer. Um, 
I can't tell you how many times uh, since becoming a believer that where I've prayed daily for my kids and over them. But as I mentioned before, prayer is, is a great privilege that I exercise every morning when I get up, uh, constantly throughout the day and before I lay my head down to sleep. Uh, prayer is also a primary means of communication with God where I can just come and rest in His presence. And what's so important about this to me is, and how it relates to fatherhood, is because my Father in Heaven is always available to me. You know, whether my own biological dad uh, was either never there before me in the past, or maybe, you know, because of distance, um, I don't get to see him that often. But because my Father in Heaven is always available to me, I can be the same way to my children. So I think that's one habit that makes me a better father. And, and staying here on a, on a topic of the Bible with uh, Corinthians, you mentioned again the, the verse about running to win. What do you think it means to run to win when it comes to fatherhood? How, how does a dad run to win when it comes to being a dad? That's a good question. Um, to me, what I think that means is you want to, just like running a race, you know, uh, be, before you get to the race, or be, before you get into fatherhood, um, you want to you want to be as pre- prepared as much as possible for for the road, the challenging road that's going to lie ahead. Once you're in the race, it's game day. You got to bring your best. You got to be your best. You just got to give your best to your family. You know, to your kids always. Now I know that no one's perfect. You know, we all stumble. We all hit that wall, that proverbial wall in uh, uh, in marathoning. Um, you know, there's also potholes to avoid, you know, on the course. Uh, there's also detours that might distract us. Uh, but as dad, we just got to run our race and run our own race at that, too. You know, don't worry about, um, you know, this person or that. Just run your race and run it well. So well that you just want to win that race at all costs. Well, fatherhood certainly isn't a sprint because you can say that it just keeps going and going. <laughs> With your 11-month-old, you've got another 17 years still. And I guess even at age 18, though, being a father doesn't end. It just changes a little bit. Uh, Dennis, let's talk about uh, maybe resources here. What is one resource that you have used that has helped you with your kids? Um, Without a doubt, I have to say it's been uh, a... uh, an online radio, uh, not an online radio, but a radio broadcast called Focus on the Family. Um, I've been listening to their radio broadcasts and even podcasts for several years now, and they have not only helped to shape my faith in Christ, but they've also helped me to understand what a good dad really is. Um, So what I would do is I would strategically uh, download their, uh, their podcast each morning before I would head out to work, But on my way home from work when, you know, especially on those toughest days and those days where I'm carrying the the burden of the day with with all this stress and frustrations from the work day, I don't want to bring that home to my family. So what I would do ahead of time was pop that uh, that podcast on and then I would listen to that on my way home. And more often than not, the subjects that they would talk about were right on point with any issues that I was dealing with concerning my marriage, uh, but also with fatherhood. So that's one thing that really helped to uh, help me to leave the frustrations and burdens of work behind at work, which is tough for, for dads to do. Um, and then it made me uh, just be more pleasant and better to come when I came home to my family. And is that podcast with uh, Dr. James Dobson, or is it with another another man? It, it's another gentleman. Um, his name is um, Jim Daly. All right, so again, look for that podcast, Jim Daly, with Focus on the Family, out in Colorado Springs. And Dennis, yep. let's talk some now about your book, uh, your, your writing. You hope to out, have it out later this year, and you're titling it, the strength of a dad. Let's talk about what is the strength of a dad. Well, the strength of a dad for me, um, where I where I draw that from, is in my faith. Um, there's a 
Um, one of the most encouraging uh, verses from the book of Psalms in the Bible, and one of my personal favorites, comes from Psalm 121, verses 1 through 2, where it says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now, I did some research on the word help. And used in this uh, verse, and many times throughout the Bible, it's used to describe God as one who lends assistance and support, especially in times of hardship and distress. Now, coincidentally, it is the same word used to describe women in relation to men uh, with regards to creation when God created Adam and Eve. Uh, he said, uh, it's not good for man to be alone. I'm going to make a suitable helper, helper for him. But helper means um, one who lends assistance and support, especially in times of hardship and distress. So I think it's important in this book the the running theme is going to be to uh, for fathers that although fatherhood can be tough at times, it's so important to know where our strength as dads come from. And before any dad decides to throw in the towel or give up the fight, um, just you know if they can hold on to that verse or that um, that theme, you know that uh, our help comes from the Lord. Yeah, I think dads, we do need help. And we, we help our families. You know, we, we talked about earlier here about providing for our families. So we, we provide provision. We talked about protecting our families. So we provide protection. And that's, whether it's uh, providing or protecting, that's, that's help. And we give help. And fa- as fathers, we need to give, give, give. But we also need to receive something ourselves because we're not all powerful. And I think... Uh, each dad needs to find strength, not not only from within, but from another place where he can receive and not just give. Again, you're listening to Father Nation with Jesse Foster. Today we have Dennis Miranda on the show. His website again, running to win pgh.com. Running to win Pittsburgh. And Dennis has a theme run to win. Dennis, that's a great quote, run to win. And I was wondering if you have any other quotes on fatherhood that you've either read or maybe your own quote that you can use on fatherhood. Absolutely. Uh, there, there's so many that I've uh, read or heard over the years. Um, but more recently, um, after we adopted our, our daughter, Sophia, uh, I remember uh, shortly after the first time we met her, in the hospital, um, this thought just kind of came to my mind and it just sort of blurted out what I was feeling at the time, but it also was kind of reassuring to me as well. So um, this is one of my own quotes, uh, something that I, I think about often. Fatherhood to me is like being led to a cliff, peering over its edge and then diving headfirst into the river below. But once you land in the water, you can't help but be swept away. It's it's scary sometimes. You know, for me, uh, I didn't know how to be a dad. So it was like being on the edge of a cliff and looking down at the water, you know, the the rushing river and the rocks below and thinking to myself, man, what am I doing? You know, what what do I do? I don't I don't know what to do. But sometimes you just got to take that leap of faith, jump off the cliff. And once you dive in that water, when the water just, you know, that river of of love just takes over you, you just allow it to, uh, you just can't help but be swept away by your kids, you know. Well, let's talk about that that fear oftentimes we have as dads as if we're peering uh, peering over a cliff. And you've recently adopted uh, Sophie. She's 11 months old. What led you to adopt? And do you have any fears going through that process? How did it go? And how did you deal with that? Um, what led to that was uh, after our two children were born, uh, our, our uh, youngest son, he was born in, um, in 93. And uh, so after that, excuse me, 92, my wife's going to kill me for forgetting his age. But um, 
after that, we've always wanted more kids. I've always had a desire, and I, and I kind of think that most dads have a desire to like have, you know, um, you know, big families, you know. But through a lot of bad choices, you know, that both my wife and I made, you know, she couldn't have kids, you know, after our second son was born. But that desire never left. It was it was like a seed that was planted in there, and um, it wasn't until about three years ago where it actually took root and started to grow and my wife and I went into uh, become foster parents uh, we took two kids to uh, a sibling group uh, they were uh, one and three months old at the time and we had every intention of, of adopting them but over the next year and a half over the course of time it just didn't happen for us uh, and then it, it ended up what's called an adoption a, a disruption or disappointment it just didn't happen um, so we struggled with that and we thought you know what what was our next step to do so um, going back to uh, the Bible quote from first Corinthians run to win we didn't give up you know we said you know what if, if we want to do this which we did we had to get back in the fight. And so we went with a different organization. This time we had to, where foster care is free to adopt, if you're, if you're privileged to adopt in that way. Um, going through um, an adoption agency is not free and it can cost a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars you know, to adopt. So it wasn't cheap. And we didn't know where we were gonna get this money from. And we had so many questions, so many fears, so many doubts, you know, what if, what if we don't get chosen? What if we wait, you know, um, five, six years like some people were doing? Uh, what if we don't have the money for it? You know, um, what if, what if, what if? You know, if, if we stayed in the presence of what if, we would never have been blessed with our daughter. So pushing past that, we just stepped out in faith. We prayed and um, we prayed for a daughter. We always wanted a daughter and, you know, by the grace of God, we got one. Um, God provided the funding. Um, you know, we just saved our, our 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 you know paychecks as much as we could. We put away, um, and you know, took out a small loan. But uh, also, um, just it, it it's like a it's like a roller coaster when you're going through that whole process. You know. You can't really see, actually, it's more like a marathon because you can't actually see the finish line. You're at the start and you're running and it has all these emotional ups and downs, these highs and lows. But once you get to the end, it's just like victory. You know, once you get to the end, you're like, wow, we really did it. We really could do it. And we did. So it was pretty, uh, pretty exhilarating. Well, congratulations on that, Dennis. And, Thank you. And what is one final thought? that you would like to give Father Nation from this episode? One thought um, I would say is, is not only to reiterate as dads, you know, know where your, your strength comes from, but something that's not really easy for us men, uh, and that's to be a loving dad. Um, love in the biblical sense. And the Bible says that faith, hope, and love, you know, are, are good, um, but the greatest of these is love. And in the biblical sense, love is, is patient. You know, we have to be patient with our children and our, and our families. Uh, but it's also kind. Um, it doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It's not arrogant. Um, it doesn't dishonor others or even oneself. Uh, it's definitely not self-seeking. So all the attention, as you mentioned before, you got to give, give, give. To your family, you know, that's what we got to do as dads. Uh, love also isn't easily angered. You know, we shouldn't be as dads so um, offended when our kids do something wrong. Um, we should discipline them, yeah, of course, but still love them. Um, it doesn't keep records of wrongs. You know, uh, our uh, mentality should be that it should be, we should have a clean slate every day with our kids. You know, teach them, hey, let's go, let's try this again. Um, love doesn't delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. And the last line of, of that is love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, 
and always perseveres. And above all else, love never fails. So you can't go wrong with, with loving your kids. This is Jesse Foster. You're listening to Father Nation with Dennis Miranda today. His website, running to win pghcom Running to Win Pittsburgh. And Dennis, he has a theme in his life, to run to win. And each dad needs to find strength, the strength of a dad. Dennis, he goes to the Bible. Where do you find your strength, dads? Father Nation is a place where we interview different dads about their experiences as a dad so that you can become a better father. You can emulate successful strategies and take action to become a better dad yourself. Father Nation is also made possible today in part by Al Cole from CBS Radio with the success of his show, People of Distinction. Among the shows heard on the Al Cole People of Distinction broadcasting network includes the actress Dee Wallace's show. She played the part of the mom on E.T., I'm happy to have Father Nation airing over the Live 365 network now, in addition to the iTunes radio network. Dennis Miranda, Dad, Maureen, thank you for coming on Father Nation. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks for having me, and thanks for all you do. It's Al Cole, host of the syndicated talk show, People of Distinction, throwing the spotlight on another one of my guests of distinction, this time taking an awesome step forward to great fatherhood in our world with the outstanding work of Jesse Foster. Jesse's the creator of the Father Nation podcast, a show to showcase dads and their committed professional work to help other dads, too. Jesse interviews fathers from all over the world to learn from them their deep, dedicated, and sometimes even playful experiences as dads so that they can share their amazing wisdom with you. In Jesse's own words, let the journeys of dads featured on my Father Nation podcast illuminate your path as a dad, too. What could be better? Hey, hey. And if you like the message, I want you to run to this website and support Jesse's Father Father Nation podcast and the great work of all dads worldwide. Go to fathernation.com. That's www.fathernation.com. And remember, hearing about the successes, the aha moments, and even the occasional failures of other dads can help you avoid their mistakes, emulate their successful strategies, and take action yourself to become a better dad. So again, run to this website, fathernation.com. That's www.fathernation.com. Jesse Foster's Father Nation podcast, helping you to imprint the kind of legacy in your family that you desire to create.